The worst thing about influencer marketing for small businesses is that the fancy software is way too expensive. Rich influencers solves that problem. Now your small business can find, engage, and manage micro and nano influencers, the ones that you can afford to work with. And reach influencers cost as low as $100 per month. It's kind of incredible. Go out and check out captureinfluence.com slash podcast and see it for yourself. Find, engage, manage, influence with the software built and priced for your size business. It's captureinfluence.com slash podcast. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, so the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs, and how we learn from adversity. Every week, I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneur's Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneur's Enigma podcast. I'm Seth. I'm here with Kevin Bailey of Dream Fuel which is a mindset high, high, how would you describe dream fuel? I'm going to let you do that actually. <laughs> yeah. No, a yeah, mental performance coaching platform. That's what it was. I got stuck on the, the performance. I was trying to fit, fit performance, that word in there. It's like, let him put the word mindset in. performance, <laughs> mindset performance, but it's all about high performance for yeah. to get people to the elite level and all that stuff. So Kevin, yeah, welcome. Yeah. Thank you very much. To, glad to be here. Seth. Yeah. So you have the esteemed pleasure of working with a previous guest, Jamie Sewell, she's your yeah. VP of marketing, right? The VP of growth. She's awesome. VP of growth. And you've been doing this mindset stuff for a while now, 2016, right? Yeah, that was when I really started to do it uh, commercially. But I'd been into <laughs> it maybe since 2006 or seven. Longer than you would like to, to admit, right? <laughs> yeah, man. For sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we graduated so the same year. We graduated the like same a, year from different schools. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. So it's like, you think back, you're like, wow, that's like more than like, wow, just, that's a long time ago. <laughs> just turned 40. So, oh, it's, it's, it's 40 it's, years it's, young. It's all uphill from here, right? <laughs> I don't mindset, know. Though, but it's all mindset. If you think that, it is. then it's going to be uphill. If you think it's, it's smooth sailing, it's going to be smooth sailing. So It is. I do an exercise. That's one of the more out there exercises I do. But probably once a month, I'll sit down and I will journal like I'm a thousand years old, um, looking back, Ooh. and I'll journal about the future. And it, it's all just a way to kind of get my mind to believe that there is still opportunity and possibility ahead of me. Um, You're only so from, forty, dude. Yeah. So from that, per, <laughs> so from so, so from that perspective, well, I mean, but I, you know, like I'm launching a new business and stuff like that. So I yeah, like to exactly. look back. At, so from that perspective, I kind of look back at myself right now like I'm a newborn. And it's just for fun. Obviously, I have no oh, idea. What it, it seems like a fun writing prompt. You know, this There's a chance of... that it could happen. I, I don't expect it. I mean, you know, if you read Kurzweil's stuff and whatever, it, you know, he gets, it's fun to just be like, you know, because from that perspective, if you think about it that way, let's say we did extend life out, you know, um, dramatically over the next, you know, 100 years. I think the, the tipping point is where you can extend it a year every year. So yeah. if you if life expectancy gets extended it more than a year every year, well then obviously that that creates a long lifespan. Yeah. Um, but it's fun to just imagine and dream. But in that situation, I'm like a newborn. Just we're just. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah we're, so. like, if you're a thousand years old <laughs> and when you're writing that, forty is yeah. nothing. Yeah, we're we're toddlers. So exactly, exactly. <laughs> so let's talk about your background. You grew up just south of Chicago. Um, you went to University of Indiana. Yeah. Yeah, and and so what did you study over there? I studied this, and then I got a minor in physics. So I studied Ooh. that. I was like finance accounting and a little bit of physics. So how did you find your way from that world to mindset? Well, you've been doing it since, well, you graduated in 2004, so 2006 you got into mindset. How did you find your way into mindset training? So I used visualization for my first startup, which was really the first mm -hmm. stuff I did. Um, I really got into visualization on my first startup, and we had some amazing visualizations that led to some really impressive outcomes. So the Ooh. first startup I did was Inc. 58. Um, we, we had 12 million in ARR with no, no funding in I think, three and a half years. Oh, um, wow. So it was this rocket ship growth. And then uh, when I hit about that point, I accidentally uh, had my first child. Uh, oh, somebody, oops. You know, oops. Um, he's awesome. But anyway. Best, uh, best, best thing in the world. Yeah. Even when it's planned, it's still an oops. Because you get yeah. to it and you, and you have them and you're like, now what? Yeah. There's no user manual. 
So we always say babies break mindsets. And at that point I was running a hundred plus person organization and I was CEO and then I had this accidental pregnancy. And then at the time I felt like I was just completely underwater and my mindset oh, broke and mm -hmm. I didn't have like a mental breakdown or anything like that, but I started to become very unproductive. Mm -hmm. And I met a neuroscientist, um, Diane Powell, and she taught me basically about the physiological states, where I was, and then taught me some hacks to shift out of it. And I also met a former Air Force or Navy pilot from Vietnam who had cured PTSD with meditation. Oh, and wow. He got, he got real serious about helping me with my meditation practice. So I kind of combined those two things, awareness and mindfulness mm -hmm. with neuroscience. I managed to resurrect myself and became a different person and a different kind of leader. And I started to became much more capable as a person and uh and my buddies started asking me what i was doing and then i started kind of coaching my friends sales teams on the side and some executives and then dream fuel was kind of born out of out of that which was just my own kind of experience realizing that i didn't know what i didn't know and that the mind and body have kind of an operating system and if you can understand it then you can do some pretty amazing feats which most professional athletes know but most people in the business world don't we're going to take a quick break, hear from our sponsors, and get right back to the show. LinkedIn believes B2B marketing can be B2B brilliant, B2B bold, and B2B breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose-built to make B2B marketing mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer's journey while building your brand. A platform with trusted data and lead generation you need to beat your KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always seen by those who matter. So let's get ready to be too boldly go where no marketer has gone before because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything you can be. Rethink your B2B marketing ads and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. It's amazing. You looked at the high achievers. And what they do, and I mean, Bezos and Gates and Buffett, these guys clearly have a mindset in some way, shape, or form. I mean, Bezos, they who the heck knows what's going on with him? Who knows the heck, you know, Bezos is his own person. But, yeah. the system, but seriously, he clearly has something because he started literally in an office with this pic that picture haunts me. It's all over LinkedIn. It's always funny to me. Like, here's Bezos and you know, in like, what was it? Like 97, just himself and a bunch of books. Yep. And the way he's now, he's like the second most important man and, you know, most richest man in the world. The first one we will not mention because I'm very bitter <laughs> at that person right now. So I still understand how he's the richest, but we'll leave. A lot of people are bitter, bitter about him right now. I, uh, I don't he's follow him weird. too closely. He has, he's got, he, he he's has amazing. some, I would say he has some psychological stuff he might want to sort out. He's ASD. He's yeah, like, yeah. He's I, admitted that he's ASD. I mean, that's some of the things I think that some of the most brilliant people. I think that was wonderful. He admitted that on, on SNL. But I, I still think he, there's you can have ASD. He's not sorted still, out now. Now that you admitted it. Still some it, stuff to sort out. Yeah. He, it's he, not even ASD kinda, that needs to sort out. You can have ASD and be be totally fine. I, yeah. The the level of confrontation he likes to create with people seems to be interesting. But I rented a, a Tesla Model X P100D Ooh. or whatever last time I was in San Diego. And marvelous car so i don't know why we ought to be like entrepreneur celebrities like he built a great car like he could just keep it at that you know instead of <laughs> all this other stuff rough. yeah and we don't just... need all this like personal shit you build a great car you know you build a great That's car awesome. and then spacex and then yeah you build great rockets starlink like, and starlink why do we why do why does everybody need to be a little micro celebrity right because the story, then we'll get back on topic here in a second and we like how we said we're not going to mention them yeah we mentioned them but um <laughs> but the whole idea is that he everyone equates him to tony stark and in in iron man uh, because he's, he's done all Tony these weird Stark. things. And I'm like, he's not Tony Stark. He, Tony Stark had his own craziness, but that's besides the point. So, you know, back to Kevin here. So, yeah. Kevin, so you say so the whole mindset journey, you had your kid, first kid. How many, you have three kids now? Is that what it is? Yeah, three. So, obviously, the other ones were more planned than the first one, I hope. Yeah. yeah they <laughs> but you see, so you your first kid, you <laughs> kind of had to then hack your mindset. You figured out, hey, I have a knack for this. I enjoy this. Is this something that I want to do for a living? Now, have you always been an entrepreneur at heart? Is that a like, in the genes in your family, or is it? Yeah, it's like... definitely in my genes. Um, so yeah, that that path was sort of always natural. Oh, so you grew up seeing your parents being entrepreneurs and stuff like that. Yeah, my grandparents. Yeah. 
Oh, so a long line of entrepreneurs. And so what is the best thing about being an entrepreneur besides be, versus being an intrapreneur? I like to always say people that are in businesses <laughs> can have the opportunity to be an intrapreneur. Yeah. A lot of them aren't, but a lot of them can be if they choose to be. What is like the best thing about being an entrepreneur? I mean, it's very much on you. Uh, and it's not really politics. It's a puzzle. Uh, it's an incredible journey. It has incredible potential to it. It has heroing falls. It's a really fun game. I don't know. It's a fun game. Yeah, it is. a. Fun, and I think it's the first time I heard someone actually really say that it's like a game. But when you think about it, it, it really is. If you're on a hero's journey here and you're able to align yourself and go where you want to go, which is nice. And I think that it can also be kind of the opposite question, which I usually ask afterwards, what's the scariest thing about being an entrepreneur? I think it's oftentimes the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's all on you. So you've, you've got nobody else to blame if you have struggles. It's a heroic quest for sure. Um, it's I, th I think of uh, hero's journeys. I love Joseph Campbell's framework. We use it mm -hmm. a lot in our programs. You look at the hero's journeys, especially if you're wanting to build a high growth company, which is a, which is a whole other type of um, entrepreneurial roller coaster. But it will put you to the mat and test every fiber of your being. So it's not as much of a challenge as being a soldier in war or something, but it has a way of ironing out your issues. Um, <laughs> you sign up to be successful and make some money and have a good time and then you end up going on some soul journey that reveals you know every every aspect of you that needs to be worked on what is the most important thing you get to carry with you all the time you got to carry a light heart mm -hmm. you can't take this thing too seriously whenever i see anybody taking uh taking life too seriously or entrepreneurship too seriously or anything too seriously. I always, I always say they're ready for a scarcity trap. They're mm -hmm. ready to get stuck. Um, they start to drift into those awful states of flight and freeze and, mm -hmm. you know, cortisol induced comas, uh, you know, I can lower exhaustion, burnout. And, uh, the only real way to, to get through the journey and not live in those states is to carry a light heart. You got to roll with the punches. I like to, mm -hmm. You know, I like from a mindset standpoint to, I affirm to myself, you know, people say, oh, uh, how you doing? Like, I live in the dream. Um, and I like to, I like to think of this as a dream. So yeah. whenever I get too, too caught up in reality and things get too serious, I, I affirm to myself, I go, you know, I might get done with this and realize that this was a dream, just like the dreams I have. And like, I don't get mad at my dreams. I wake up and I'm like, eh. And I've heard a lot of people talk about near-death experiences where they wake up and they, or they come out of, you know, whatever. And they're just like, yeah, like life isn't even that big of a deal when you look at it from that perspective. And mm -hmm. there's there's other dimensions beyond this. And so I, I like sometimes when things are getting kind of kind of serious. I'm like, this is probably, this could just be a dream. And you're going to mm -hmm. wake up out of this and you're going to look at this and be like, oh, well, this is one of my many lifetimes or however you want to say it. And it just wasn't that big of a deal. And I spent my time being frustrated. And I, I hope when I get done with this dream yeah. that I uh, that I look quotes. back and I'm and I and I say uh, I say that was a good dream because I didn't yeah. take it fucking seriously. I didn't, sorry, I've heard my friend. No, you, you can curse this. You can curse this. You can curse this. It's fine. It's totally cool. So, so it, carrying, it kinda, a light, yeah. carrying a light carrying a light a light heart. It kind of always reminds me. I always think of it this, for some reason. This it's a good movie, but it's not exactly a very deep movie. But Men in Black, at the very end of the movie, when they zoom out of the Earth. And they zoom yeah. out, of the, out of that, and all of a sudden, it's a bag of marbles, and an alien, alien's holding it. Yeah. This galaxy of a galaxy of a galaxy of a galaxy of a galaxy to a marble. And the alien's just looking at this, and we're just tiny, that microscopic speck. And I'm sure they were going there with that, yeah. to make you think. But I wonder how many people actually thought about that, and that, that's that one end scene stuck with them. Whereas the rest of the movie, I forget. I mean, I know it was a good movie, but I don't remember the details. I yeah, that no, I, I remember that scene really well too. It was a great ending, you know. Um, and the rest of the movies were trash. <laughs> it was a pretty. They were bit. fun, but they were not. They were yeah. not like the sequels were, are never like the, the original. There's very few uh, that yeah. have like, sequels. I mean, Top Gun was really good. The second Top Gun, from what I hear. I yeah, I saw that. Uh, have you seen it? I have not seen it, but I hear that it helped that it was really far from the first one. So it's almost it's like a, a catch-up yeah. versus a sequel. So. 
Yeah, it's a trip down memory lane to an era of American history that was different. <laughs> <laughs> different to say the least, exactly. <laughs> so, Kevin, so Dream Fuel, what, what, how would you describe Dream Fuel? Yeah, so Dream Fuel is a mental performance coaching platform. We work with high performers, helping them become elite performers. So we work with people who have a very high potential, work with the athletes as well as executives as well as a lot of high performing salespeople and some other people from other departments and teams anybody who has a lot of potential who tends to have good and bad days mm -hmm. maybe a little more bad days than they would like and then yeah. we teach them how to recraft reconfigure rewire reprogram whatever you want to call it their mindset using some neuroscience based tools to That's where right. they show up consistently at a, a not with a high performance mindset day in and day out, which raises their performance, their productivity, more flow state, more being in the zone, um, bigger, better numbers, whatever they're doing, productivity increases because they have less bad days. They, they show up feeling good most days. They get it done. They, they know how to kind of hack their nervous system. That's um, wild. Yeah. It's really fun. It sounds like a lot of fun. And then you can go back and say, hey, I helped that person. That person was a you know, hot mess, and then we came in there, and now he, not only he's like this elite performer, he's meeting his goals, his home life's better, he's not stressed out, he's not burnt out. You know, I mean, that's a pretty rewarding thing yeah. to be able to draw on. Exactly. Yeah, awesome. people love it. It's a beautiful job, and I get to do what I enjoy all the time and yeah. um, help people through their epic quests. Their hero's journey. Their, their, their dreams. Exactly. Yeah. That's wild. And I do like that. It's called dream fuel because, it, you know, we are in a perpetual dream and it's kind of meta because then you go into a dream and sometimes those dreams have dreams within those dreams and, you know, the tunnel. <laughs> those are the weird ones. When you get into a dream and you wake up, you're still in the dream. You're like, wait, I got to keep going, you know, up this ladder to get out of this damn thing. It's fractals. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the whole idea is that. So dream fuel, you can find it. At, what is it? It's dreamfuelcoaching.com, right? Dream, dreamfuel.com. So your dream fuel Dreamfuel.com. I get used yep. to that. You're also at Kevin James Bailey on the LinkedIn. Yeah. Literally, that's, that's, LinkedIn, if you yeah, look man. for that, look from there, you can find him on LinkedIn. Where else Where else do you hang out online? Uh, those are really the two places. Um, I, I I like to make some time for LinkedIn every week, but that's about as far as I can spread right now with everything I got going on. So, Kevin, this has been fun. Yeah, I've been good chatting with you, Seth. <laughs> awesome. And we'll see everyone next week. That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneur's Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast directory of your choice. We're on all of them. And these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee, go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes to your ears. That's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys. Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network. This podcast is coming to you on MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. There's another show on MPN you might enjoy as well. I'm Jamie Lieberman, host of the UnBusiness Podcast. In each episode, we talk about the issues that face every entrepreneur where business and legal strategy intersect. Subscribe to the UnBusiness Podcast today. It'll make your business that much smarter. Just visit hashtag-legal.com or search for the UnBusiness Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.